Too much garbage in your face? There's plenty of space out in space! Hey guys, my name is Doc Jade, and welcome to episode 7 of K2SE. To make the rare metals for blue circuits, we'll need hydrogen chloride to enrich the ores before we can smelt them. We can make hydrogen chloride by mixing water and sand in an electrolysis plant, then combining the output in a chemical plant. Electrolysis takes a ton of power, but we shouldn't need too many of them. A quick pipe later, I plugged in enrichment, which has nothing to enrich yet. We still need to mine the rare metals, which takes chlorine. There isn't a way to make just chlorine, so we'll have to use even more electrolysis and burn off the excess hydrogen. After hooking it in, it's not very fast. Turns out we're not making enough sand due to a stone shortage, since our stone mine is nearly dry. There's another patch to our east, so I'll lay some track, run out of track, and ship some track back from Navis. While we wait on that, I'll ghost the rest of the rails and start mining the stone patch. This patch is pretty small, but it's got a great personality. I'll wire up the train station, plug everything in, and send the stone train over. I loaded up two wagons worth of stone, but the unloading station was only built for one. A tight squeeze to unload the second wagon later, back to rare metals. With enrichment running, I brought over the vulcanite blocks, built some furnaces, and that's rare metals. I'll grab them, extend the bus for no reason, then whip together some temporary blue circuit production. A short trip to Concrete Island later, I'll handcraft the missing industrial furnaces. I wasn't able to make all of them, but I made sure to put some in steel production, which is now just missing coke. We don't have any wood for coke yet, so time for greenhouses. Then I'll set up some furnaces, plug the wood in, get the coke out, and that's steel production. The next science I want to make is utility science, which takes blue circuits, space belts, efficiency modules, cryonite rods, machine learning data, and thermofluid. The science is made in space manufactories, but they look pretty big, so we're definitely going to need a lot of room in orbit. To make said room in orbit, we'll need space scaffolding, which takes low density structure, heat shielding, and steel. We have everything for low density structure except plastic, so I'll build that and research space scaffolding. I have no idea how much plastic we'll need, but two belts sounds like enough for now. Since oil isn't infinite in Crastorio, it gets productivity too, too. Once plastic was on the bus, I took another look at scaffolding. Turns out you can only make it in space. Unfortunately, Keras Orbit doesn't have any asteroids for us to build on. So we'll have to make a bunch of scaffolding in Navis Orbit, then ship it back to Keras Orbit. While I'm on Navis, might as well fix the stone mine. All of the ingredients for the scaffolding are cannonable, and we already have a delivery system set up in orbit, which is just missing steel. I can bring up the steel with me in the space capsule, but for some inexplicable reason, I brought bricks instead. The rocket I use for sending things around currently has some random junk in it, but it also has steel, so I sent it up. I'll start making the scaffolding, which isn't too slow, but it still takes a while. Then we'll ship it up and over to Keras Orbit, and place it all down. The resulting platform isn't very big, but I've done more with a lot less. Back down to Keras. Looking ahead a bit, there's a lot of planning we need to do. We need a lot of space assemblers up in orbit, which needs lube for big electric engines. Shipping up just lube seems a, a little bit wasteful. Thankfully, we can unlock biochemical facilities, which will let us do oil processing up on the platform. I'll cue those, which also unlocks thermal fluid, which is made of heavy oil and chemical gel. And chemical gel is made from cosmic water and petroleum, so we're definitely going to need quite a bit of oil processing up there. For utility science, we'll need to make the machine learning data, which needs data cards. They don't look too complicated, but we will need glass and silicon, which we can't make in space at the moment. Industrial furnaces don't work in space, but we can make thermodynamic facilities, which are space's furnace equivalent. So smelting the glass and silicon isn't the problem can't do is make sand, since pulverizers and crushers don't work in space. We could make the sand with a mechanical facility, but it's locked behind production science, which I want to make after utility science, but I should plan ahead for both. Production science takes productivity modules, iron ingots, uranium-238, vulcanite blocks, machine learning data, and plasma stream. Might as well send a bunch of uranium over to Keras in the background. We'll need quite a bit of water for oil processing in orbit, but I don't know if mining water ice is a good long-term solution. We should plan on making water ice ourselves with cryonite sometime in the future, which is fine since we need cryonite rods for utility science anyways. Plasma stream for production science is made with lithium and chemical gel, so I'll have to set up lithium pretty soon. Once we have production science, we can research growth facility, which would let us make crude oil in space. But that's pretty far off, so I won't plan for it quite yet. Space manufactory. 
I don't see any new ways to make power in space, but I did spot a better rocket fuel recipe, which uses pyroflux and less oxygen. Might come in handy later. Kovrax enrichment is just around the corner, but a nuclear setup in space sounds like a terrible idea. Maybe later. To actually produce anything in space, we'll need to ship up a bunch of resources. So it's time for cargo rockets. I'll start making some landing pads. I had originally planned for Keras to ship up only basic resources to the space platform. But since space in space is sparse, we'll build intermediates like blue circuits down on the ground to save as much room as possible. Thermodynamics facility. All-Q plasma generator, thermal radiator, data cards, supercomputers for machine learning data, and both of the sciences. I was going to make blue circuits from scratch, but it ended up getting pretty ugly, so I split up the circuits into their own productions. First up is green circuits, which get efficiency modules instead of productivity modules, since they're so cheap, then red circuits, which ends up being pretty large. But as usual, Murphy's Law holds true, and we run out of power. A few more gas generators should be enough for now. After plugging in the plastic, that's red circuits. Now time for a bus extension and blue circuits. Compared to red circuits, blue circuits are super simple. I put them on the bus, then realized we're about to run right over some immersite caves. I'll uncover them so we can use them later. With all the circuits on the bus, let's fix power. I'll make some solar panel and accumulator production, then design a big solar tile. Roboport spacing is usually annoying to work with, but if you double them up, they tile correctly with substations. This solar design isn't going to win any beauty contests, and it's probably not ratioed correctly, but we can easily cover the entire concrete island with them. It'll take a very long time to build, but the bots can do that in the background while we set up cargo rockets to deliver the materials to orbit. We'll also need cargo rockets to send the ingredients to make cargo rockets from Navis. I checked to see if we had any silos in storage, but all I saw was the mall eating a suspicious amount of stone. Turns out, I was making a lifetime supply of stone furnaces. Looks like I'll have to make the silos myself. I started setting up some large electric motor manufacturing, and went to connect the lube, which runs right above iron ingot production. But yet again, that's a future me problem. I plugged in steel, and the base unplugged me. All of the robots placing solar panels is making our rolling blackouts even worse. And it wasn't plugged in. With big electric motors at my side, we can make silos. Much to your dismay, I will handcraft them. While crafting those, the iron input slowed to a trickle, which puts us in a big pickle, because the iron train, that you don't see, was never set up by me. Thankfully, there's another patch just south of our stone train's train tracks. We need new trains for the mine, but my hands are occupied. Using assemblers to craft faster makes me feel like a lazy bastard. I copied the rails of the stone mine design, which isn't stealing because it's mine. Once I pasted it down with signals for train navigation, I'll place the miners and move the ores to the station. I plugged it in, made sure the loaders were working, then I realized we could have used level 2 mining drills. Oh well. With the train running, the ore supply should start catching up. Back to cargo rockets, I started setting up the landing pads for the rocket sections, rocket fuel, and space capsules. Then to the left, I'll put a cargo silo for each item. Iron, copper, steel, rare metals, and all three types of circuits. Since we're shipping in all of the rocket ingredients from Navis, we can easily move this setup later if we need to build more production for items on the bus. I'll plug in the items, but I won't build the last five silos yet, since we still need to send the rocket parts over from Navis, which I'll start crafting the silos for now. Having bars on the bus is slightly inconvenient for handcrafting. Research has been stopped for a while. Navis orbit is out of lube, which is an easy fix. Plasma generator. After queuing all of the rocket part silos, I'll make a landing pad and cannon chest to leave up in orbit. Thermal radiator. We'll need a landing pad for each of the resources in orbit, but we don't have nearly enough room up there yet, so I'll build just one for now. Speaking of room, I left behind quite a bit of scaffolding in Navi's orbit, which I'll bring back later. After giving the landing pads some fancy nameplates and setting up a spot for making scaffolding, I'll make some space assemblers, then launch up to the platform. Then we'll head over to Navi's orbit. Since the space capsules don't have a cargo limit when landing from orbit, we can bring the scaffolding and some rocket sections down with us. Supercomputer. There's a meteor shadow on the ground here, but no meteor to be seen. Spooky. One, two, three, and three cargo silos later, we can set them to point at their respective landing pads on Keras. 
I also learned that if you use the same name for multiple landing pads, the rockets will fly to the closest empty pad. That'll come in handy later. I'll start plugging in the silos. One for rocket fuel, one for packed cargo sections, and one for space capsules, which might be a little overkill, but whatever. But the Navi space is struggling to make the cargo rocket sections, due to, yet again, stone delivery issues. I was able to improve throughput in a few places, but I'll have to fix stone later, since rocket fuel is in even worse shape. But before I start working on that, I'll load up all the space-related items into the random item silo, along with a bunch of resources to send to Keras Orbit. Now for the rocket fuel. I'm betting the Pyroflex recipe would scale a lot better than our current setup, so I'll research that. Except Navi's orbit is out of stone, and the random rocket is a bit busy at the moment. While we wait for that to fill up, might as well take a look at the stone supply. It's mostly suffering from a lack of loading speed. So I took the time to fix that, then used the space capsule rocket to send it up. But the stone still isn't quite keeping up with demand. Deliveries are slow since the stone mine is pretty far away from the base. I'll add another train. Which didn't go very well, but I eventually got it working. Time to tear down the rocket fuel production, then fix the stone train again. I also added a second train of copper for giggles and kicks, which went just as well. Space science stopped again. This time it needs more steel. The resource rocket for Keras Orbit is ready this time though, so I sent that over. Then launched up more steel and rocket fuel to orbit, along with some space science I found in storage. Biters ate the stone train. After taking a level-headed and clear-minded response, the stone trains did what they do best. Then one ran me over. One quick deus ex machina later, I think the stone trains are finally working. But don't quote me on that. Continuing to be sidetracked from rocket fuel, I'll tear down the labs on Navis and stuff the science into chests, since we'll be shipping it to Keras Orbit by hand for the foreseeable future. Lots of waiting faster later, new and improved rocket fuel. The ratios for this one are pretty simple, so I'll sacrifice some compactness for aesthetics, then bring up the vulcanite blocks and sand. After adding the iron and coal that I totally didn't forget, that's rocket fuel. Only issue is, Turgmam isn't shipping the blocks over as fast as we are consuming them, but it turned out to be a misconfigured pump on the condenser setup. I checked in on the cargo rocket silos with cargo rockets of cargo rocket cargo, which are severely lacking proper input of cargo rocket related cargo. The car no go due to a lack of low density structure, which is clearly due to a lack of glass, but it would be a pain to fix, so I'll take a crack at it later. I considered upgrading the low density structure assemblers to tier 3, so I could cram in more productivity, but the mall on Navis is about as useful as a book on learning to read, so we wouldn't be able to make them even if we wanted to. Speaking of wants, I want to eventually make all of the science in space, but biolabs don't work in space, so I'll have to wait till I find another way to make creep. The ingot production of Doom on Keras stopped, because I forgot to hook up iron to sulfuric acid production. Oops. I can add the belt, but I can't kickstart it till I get back. Before we leave Navis, I might want to send ingots here in the future, so I'll add landing pads for all three times. Surely this won't cause any issues in the future. I'm tired of waiting on Navis to fill these rockets, so I'll combine them and ship them over to Keras myself. But since the silos are right next to each other, I couldn't hitch a ride. So into the other silo we go. On Keras, I sorted the materials back into their respective landing pads, production science, limited cargo section loading, then added a loop-de-loop -loop for purely functional reasons. A fistful of plates later, smelting is back up and running. Since I will inevitably forget to bring something to orbit, I'll set up a delivery cannon and use one of our few requester chests to load it, so we can launch up anything we want remotely. First on the list is scaffolding materials, but I don't want to make heat shielding in orbit, so time for sulfur production. We don't have quite enough petroleum to feed it though, so time to expand the oil refinery. Well, I am now future me. Time to move the oil setup. I was tempted to move the entire thing upwards to create more space, but that would make future future me mad, so I moved the entire setup below the bus. It was a pain to hook everything back up, but hopefully I won't have to move it again. After fixing sulfuric acid production, once again, space science is out of belts, which is out of lube. Still waiting on utility science to finish researching, but seeing cryonite rods immediately made me forget about heat shielding. Cryonite is on Saren, but since we're struggling to make cargo rockets at the moment, we'll have to ship it back with a delivery cannon instead of using the silo there. Plus, it's pretty far away. I'm pretty sure we only need the rods, but we'll see. I'll hitch a ride back to Navis on the Ingot Express, Utility Science Pack. Next up is rocket reusability, so I can waste rockets with more confidence. 
after setting up the cannons for Cryonite. I'll wait for my rocket waste coupon to finish, then head over to Saren. A quick run of power poles and a lot of missing footage later, I'll set up the cannon. I wanted to make the cryonite rods here before sending them back to Karis, but the recipe takes heavy oil, which I don't have the materials to set up here. Shipping it raw is a huge waste of resources, but I'll pretend it's temporary. One increasingly convenient emergency burn later, I'll load up another rocket on Avis and head back to Karis. After setting my S3 bucket to public, in comes the cryonite. Now for the rods, which take crushed cryonite, cryonite crystals, and heavy oil. But I will add a landing pad first to remind me to fix delivery later. Making the crystals for the rods is simple. You just steam the powder like you would broccoli. Steaming does give water as a byproduct though, so I'll have to use a pump to make sure the setup doesn't clog. With steam flowing through the valves, I'll connect heavy oil, and that's the rods. Which are apparently important enough to warrant a milestone. Maybe I should have made them earlier. Power on Saren isn't quite up to the task though, but it is temporary after all, so we'll just have to deal with it. After chesting the rods and blue raspberry rock candy, we'll use bots to deliver it over to the cannon for launching. Although our supply is quite limited. Maybe someday we'll have a planet dedicated to rods, like how Turgmam is dedicated to blocks. Kunkri has cryonite, whatever barrel is, and fish, which I think are all of the food groups, but without oil to make the rods, the whole moon is pretty much worthless. Okay, back to being off topic. We really need to send up the space scaffolding ingredients, but Navis's nuclear setup ran out of water. After teaching water the wonders of the off-grid life, Biters ransacked the stone mine again. Nuclear is back up and running, but I can't get robots over to repair the stone mine. Guess I'll make landfill in the mall. Now back to heat shielding. We need quite a few bricks, and the stone train ran into itself on Navis. How does that even happen? And a meteor in red circuits. Maybe I should set up meteor defense. Not right now. Stone into bricks, then we'll turn the bricks into stone tablets. Then add steel and sulfur to make the heat shielding. This may or may not be overkill. A few missing belts, sulfur, and steel later. That's heat shielding. Finally, moving on to the next ingredient, we need low density structure for the scaffolding as well. After managing to actually stay focused for 20 minutes, there you go. A strategic move of the cannon later, I started setting up the materials. Only issue is, to make cannon capsules, we need explosives, which we don't make. Luckily, there's a free cannon on Navis' cannon mall, so I'll just launch it over. The lack of efficiency here almost rivals the US military. Regardless, that's all of the ingredients for scaffolding. And with all of the other supplies up there, I'm pretty confident we can start working on science. Assuming I didn't forget anything, which I probably did. 